we've just witnessed was the energizing of the burnt church substation for the first time. It was accomplished by closing in the main side protection switch or the AIM switch which ties the station power transformer to the 115 kV transmission line which is fed from the Daniel Siding substation site through an eight and a half mile transmission line. As the look down the so the transformer is a 115 to 25 kV transformer of a capacity of 22.4 MVA. The low side feeds out through some bus work into the metering package portion of it, which is a simple PTCT metering package, and on through to the low side RLB or disconnect switch. To close the manually operated RLB or rated load break switch to energize the coastal portion of the station and all it will do at this point is just energize the bus work itself in the station. The coastal EMC portion of the substation is now energized and we're ready to start picking up load through one of the four outgoing circuits. The circuits consist of a oil circuit breaker and feed back through the frame through a set of regulators on each circuit. phase, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And this is a ground protector relay that will pick up any imbalance or ground faults. This is a Westinghouse RC timer that actually times the recloses back in and and uh, tells it when the, after it has tripped from here, it will time back in from the timer on this. It will automatically lock you out if it, after three unsuccessful recloses on it. Close the breaker in and it's simply a matter of tripping the handle. Next device is the in the circuit is the voltage regulator. This particular station has three regulators and one per phase for each of the four outgoing circuits. The purpose of the regulator is to maintain a constant voltage output to our consumers. This station is different from the others and the other stations we have have bus regulation. panel for these regulators. This is the uh, Siemens Alice MJ3A which is a micro processor based unit. We can maintain various voltage settings, voltage levels. We have a voltage limit control which will shut the unit down if the voltage gets too low or if it gets too high. We can put line drop compensation into it and a number of things. We can also get the bolts, power factor, and present amps out of the display pack on it. We have an alert symbol in it that will tell us if anything has gone wrong or abnormal in the unit. We can pick up the low voltage, high voltage, max amps, minimum and maximum power factor since the last reset on it.
house for the high side of this station. It contains the battery backup power which operates the high side AIM switch. It uh, houses all the relays for the protective devices that operate the AIM switch. It also houses the various chart recorders that record voltage, current, load, KVAR, and other information. The rack of batteries that actually operates this control house, the AIM switch outside that you saw operate earlier is controlled by a DC motor. The reason for having a DC battery pack is to have the ability to operate the station even if the power is off. The batteries are maintained at a certain charge through this uh, battery charger which shows the actual voltage output and the current flow on the unit. And it also has a test device here that indicates if you've got any problem with the charger or with the system anywhere. The scheme cabinet for the high side of the substation, it has overload current relays just like our distribution breakers have. It has the open and closed handles for it. And down here we have what is known as a differential scheme whereby if more power is coming into the station and it's going out, it will trip the station out. We also have two other trip devices on it. One is a low oil trip. If we get an oil leak in the transformer when it gets to a certain level, it will trip the station out. We also have what's called a sudden change in pressure protective device that will take the station out if you have a say a fault inside the transformer that would cause a sudden pressure, this will pick it up and trip the station out all the time. Information portion of the cabinet, it maintains a chart recorder on bus voltage. We have individual phase currents, the KW load and KVA or reactive load. We have a bolt switch whereby we can actually read the actual voltage coming into the station. use supervisor switch but this station does not have supervisory connected yet and then the KW and K-bar charge which is somewhat of a check against our bill from over far. operators were able to monitor the, the points and detect problems that, or faults as they happen and it helps in troubleshooting and also helps us if we have a circuit that um, may become uh, a borderline circuit we can monitor we know it's going to happen and we can get out and transfer or make the necessary corrections.
put in for the purpose of relieving some of the overload on Daniel siding, providing more reliable service in this area, and hopefully to cut down on intermittent breaker operation blinks and, and extended outages. My cameraman and production manager, Mr. Mark Bolton, and if you have any technical questions that you might like to ask, Mr. Collins would be glad to answer any that you may have.